Trump would resent not being invited to Harry and Meghan's wedding, could put the post-Brexit deal at risk, and will treat the Queen like a reality contestant if he gets a state visit, claims Wolf. Theresa May's hopes of a Brexit trade deal with the U.S. could be wrecked if Donald Trump is not invited to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, the author of a blockbuster book on the president has warned. Mr. Trump will only honor the special relationship if he gets what he wants, and would resent the royal wedding snub according to U.S. journalist Michael Wolff. He also claimed that the president would abuse his planned state visit to Britain by Trump housing the Queen, hogging the limelight and treating her as though she is on one of his reality TV shows. The comments were made by Mr. Wolff in his first British newspaper interview since Mr. Trump reacted with rage to the publication of Fire and Fury, inside the Trump White House. Speaking to the Mail on Sunday, Mr. Wolff made fresh astonishing claims about the president's mental state, saying some officials believe the 71-year-old had learning disabilities or even dementia. Others thought he could have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD a mental disorder often associated with children. Mr. Wolff revealed how Mr. Trump is so ignorant about the UK that he had no idea what Brexit was as late as two weeks before the referendum in 2016 and he stood by his account of Tony Blair's secret visit to the White House, first revealed by this newspaper in March last year. He dismissed Mr. Blair's denial last week that he told Mr. Trump Mile 6 may have spied on him. Mr. Vault said the allegation came from Mr. Trump himself, and claimed the former Prime Minister had been trying to curry favor with the new president. Award-winning political writer Mr. Vault, 64, said he had been astounded by the global impact of his book which was based on months inside the White House West Wing and interviews with more than 200 people, including Mr. Trump and his former chief strategist Steve Bannon. The White House has described the book as complete fantasy. After a failed last-ditch legal bid to ban its publication, Mr. Trump yesterday maintained his Twitter war of words with Mr. Wolf, branding him a total loser. But a defiant Mr. Wolf stuck to his guns in an interview with the Mail on Sunday, he warned Mrs. May's controversial offer of a state visit to Britain, made weeks after Mr. Trump was elected, could backfire. It was seen as a bid to woo him into giving Britain the lucrative post-Brexit and blow us trade deal. But Mr. Wolf claimed Mr. Trump sees it purely as an opportunity to show off and outshine the Queen. He sees the Queen in reality TV show terms. That's the Trump modus operandi. He will try to Trump polite the Queen and Buckingham Palace. And there could be more trouble if he is not on the guest list for the royal wedding in May. He doesn't like being snubbed and wants to be the center of attention all the time, Mr. Wolf said. Trump's foreign policy doctrine is simple. You Brits suck up to him and enlist in whatever geopolitical fantasy he is going. He'll give you what you want, though only if it doesn't hurt him. It is not so much vengeance. Rather you flatter me and I'll flatter you. However, it is thought to be unlikely that Mr. Trump will be invited to the wedding, not least because Prince Harry recently conducted a phony interview with Barack Obama. M.S. Markle is also a big fan of Trump's defeated rival Hillary Clinton. Mr. Wolf revealed how the U.S. president had little regard for the much haunted special relationship between the two nations. If the Brits give him what he wants he will value the Brits, he said. I interviewed Trump two weeks before your 2016 referendum and he had no idea what Brexit was. In his book, already a bestseller in both the U.S. and U.K., Mr. Wolf paints a cold picture of Mr. Trump's marriage, describing how he and his wife Melania have separate bedrooms at the White House, the arrangement of a man who has spent his life chasing women. And he claims the self-obsessed president craves love but cannot return it. He needs love and doesn't understand when he doesn't get it. He writes, he doesn't love, other than enormous flattery, he doesn't care about or bond with other people. He demands loyalty but doesn't return it. However, Mr. Wolf offers a crumb of comfort to those who may see the claims as further evidence that Mr. Trump could set off a third world war in a moment of madness. In fact, the president's selfishness makes it less likely. He always asks, what's in it for me? He wouldn't get anything from pressing the button. Mental issues. No, I'm a genius, insists furious president. Senior U.S. officials fear Donald Trump is suffering from dementia, has learning difficulties or could even have ADHD, according to Michael Wolf. In an explosive interview with the Mail on Sunday, 
the Fire and Fury author said that the White House had become a madhouse under the current regime, and warned it was getting madder. The astonishing comments, which go much further than previous speculation over Mr. Trump's state of mind, will infuriate the U.S. leader. Yesterday, in an extraordinary intervention, the president took to Twitter to defend his mental state, describing himself as a very stable genius. In a series of tweets, a clearly infuriated Mr. Trump wrote, Actually, throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being, like, really smart. Crooked Hillary Clinton also played these cards very hard and, as everyone knows, went down in flames. I went from very successful businessman, to top T. V. Star to President of the United States on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart, but genius, and a very stable genius at that. Mr. Trump also compared the growing debate over his health to the speculation that surround Donald Reagan and his fitness to be president. He tweeted, now that Russian collusion, after one year of intense study, has proven to be a total hoax on the American public, the Democrats and their lap dogs, the fake news mainstream media, are taking out the old Donald Reagan playbook and screaming mental stability and intelligence. But Mr. Bolt insisted that the fear over Mr. Trump's mental capacity was widespread in the White House, and that it had its roots in his childhood. He said, he's just a rich wastrel. He was bad at school. They don't know if it is because he had learning disabilities. They discuss it at the White House, his apparent inability to read one page or one paragraph. He can't even follow the PowerPoint. They wonder where that is from. ADHD. A learning disability. They thought maybe the guy couldn't read or it's an illiterate. White House insiders also speculated whether Mr. Trump had the early stages of dementia, said Mr. Wolf. Whether it's lack of sleep, the compounded effects of age, or there's actually some impairment, and that's a possibility, everybody around him discusses that. Mr. Wolf added that he wasn't suggesting Mr. Trump was clinically mad, but that he was so unpredictable and ecomaniacal the White House had become a madhouse and it was getting worse, he warned. Everyone around him says the symptoms have got worse in the year he has been in office, his attention span has lessened, his verbal patterns are more peculiar. The White House exaggerates character traits. Trump came to the job with character traits weirder than other people and counterproductive to being president. The speculation over Mr. Trump's state of mind is proving to be one of the most damaging elements of the fallout from Mr. Wolf's book. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was forced to state yesterday that he had never questioned Mr. Trump's mental fitness.